guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for tonight's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So I do have an update from the Japan story that I want to read with you guys. I actually reached out to the Reddit author and asked him if he had any updates on his story because tons of you guys commented in my comment section saying you needed an update because it was left on such a cliffhanger. Per usual, I'm going to go through my little intro. I have my Wicked candle here. It smells like caramel apples. It's making my whole studio smell like caramel apples. It's amazing. And I do have a palette I want to showcase. It is the look that I'm wearing tonight. So I did didn't film it or anything because I just wanted to play around with the palette just to get a feel of how it works and I've never actually used this brand before so I'm really excited. So this is the Spooked palette from I think it's called Gourmand Girls. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I hope I'm saying it right. It's like Gourmand Girls and this is what it looks like. It is this gorgeous freaking Halloween themed spooky palette. I am absolutely obsessed with it and I love this shimmer shade. The shimmer shade I have all over my lids right now and oh my god it is so pretty. Holy crap, I am so excited. So definitely if you're into these types of palettes and colors in Halloween, go check out this palette because it's so fucking amazing. And the colors are so buttery and smooth and they blended so easily. And honestly, I love it. I'm obsessed with it. So 10 out of 10, highly recommend. <laughs> Without further ado, let's jump on into these stories. So I'm going to jump into the Reddit story just so that we can get the update out of the way. So that you guys can stop asking me for an update. <laughs> I messaged him and so this is just over our DMs. He said, as requested, here's an update to better conclude my story. I realize now that I left the story on quite an unintentional cliffhanger. I forget to take into account that not everyone in the audience may be similar to upbringings as myself. Picking up where I left off, my friends and I definitely thought that something took interest in me. I didn't receive any further calls. I'm sure you can understand, I had no desire to return to the park or test any further theories, not even during daylight. It was just too bizarre and unexplainable. It really frightened me down to my core. It's just, I was an 18 year old kid at the time and I went and visited a local shrine and explained what had occurred to me and the concern that I may have inadvertently attracted a Yuri. A Yuri is a Japanese ghost unable to pass into afterlife. The Shinto priest proceeded to perform a purification ritual on me. I also got a protective amulet to carry with me, if you believe in those sort of things. After seeking help from the shrine, I never received a phone call. My sister never received a phone call from a restricted number either. I avoided the park for the rest of my time home during that vacation. I did return to the park after a few years, and it's funny because I completely forgot or I suppressed those memories. It came back to me only when I returned. This time, it was during a pleasant afternoon. And no, I never received another phone call. Perhaps the Yuri passed on, or perhaps it sought after another unfortunate person. Who knows? I will update my Reddit post as well. Thanks again. So that is just the update that he gave me. So it's not a crazy spooky update. Nothing further happened, but he did just want to conclude the story so that you guys weren't left with a cliffhanger. And thank you so much for sending me that. That's amazing. And now we can move on to some of the DMs that I have sitting in my Instagram. So I have a bunch on Instagram that I need to go through and I'm really excited. So the first one that I want to read, I'm not going to say usernames just because like I've said, I don't know if you guys want me to read your usernames or not. So I'm just going to jump into this story. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to make this as short as possible. The first story happened when I was in middle school. I was taking a nap and I had woken up for whatever reason. I was like half asleep when I heard faint footsteps walk into my room. I sat up and turned to where I heard the footsteps and saw something peeking out from behind the rolling chair in the middle of my room. I couldn't see very well because I wasn't wearing my glasses, but I clearly saw it peeking out and it just hit again. Thought it was my little sister, so I said her name. I got no response. I looked underneath the chair to see if I could see her feet or something and there was nothing there. Again, I was half asleep. I just brush it off as seeing stuff, but I know it wasn't a dream or anything like that. To this day, I barely remember what it even looked like, but it still freaks me out and I still live in that house. Story number two. This also happened in that house. I woke up and my mom was asking my siblings and I if we had gotten out of bed last night. None of us had and we asked her why. She took all three of us to her room. She showed us her bed and there was a single footprint on her side of the bed. The toes were on her pillow and the rest of the footprint was on her bed. The crazy thing about it, it was just the left foot. We tried to recreate it somehow to see if any of us could have done it and it was literally impossible. Like if a human being did it when my mom was asleep, she would have woke up. The other crazy thing is it didn't match any of our feet, not even my dad's, but it was the closest to his foot. We never came to a conclusion that made sense. And that's all they said. So that's really fucking weird. Like that's super creepy. And I don't know, do you have any other stories like happening in that house? Or is it just like those two occurrences? Because that seems really, really, really creepy. It's very spooky. <laughs> so the next one that I want to read is another one from Instagram and it's really freaking creepy. It's a fairly long story. So let's just jump on into it. This all happened back in 2002. 
My husband and I were looking for a cheap place to rent. A buddy of his from work told him he had a place we could rent and work for since we were just a year into our marriage and we were new to the area. We were in East Lewis County, Washington. We jumped for it. Boy, did we not get what we were bargained for. It started out fine, but there were cold spots throughout the place, but being that type of place that it was, we figured it was just lack of insulation. It was an old 50s to 60s mobile home with an add-on wood stove for heat. We spent most of our time in the kitchen or living room with the doors to the other rooms closed off to try to keep the heat in. About two weeks after we moved in, we started hearing the floors creaking like someone was walking on them. Most of the time, this happened at night when my husband was at work. I chalked it up to being in an old place and possibly the cats since we had two at the time. And I was a big chicken. There was no way in hell I was gonna go look by myself. I told my husband about it on his days off and that the old creaky place had creaky floors. It got worse as time passed. One of our cats managed to get out and get pregnant. The activity in the mobile home increased. There would be the sound of this thing falling in the back room, which we never used and was empty. There would be the sound of nails scratching inside the walls, and at first, we thought it was rodents. The scratching got more intense the longer we were there. As the kittens got bigger, we thought maybe some of the sounds were from them, until we both woke up one night to see all five cats hunker down at the foot of our bed, ears laid flat against their heads. That week, we reached out to a local church and had a pastor come by to bless the place. Things stopped for a while. Then a little while longer, we started to smell something rotten. The smell got stronger by the day. First, we checked to make sure that the sewer wasn't broken or overflowing as it was an ancient septic system. It was fine, so we crawled under the house to see if maybe a critter had gotten hit on the highway and hid under a place, but we didn't find anything. My husband started talking to folks in the area about our place and a lot of them told us that a young boy had unfortunately taken his life there. In the fucking room, we would hear bumps and hear things fall, although it was empty. One of the last things for us was when I woke up after a month after the rotting smell had dissipated, having one of the most vivid fucked up dreams of my life. To this very day, I can still remember and feel the terror after waking. It started with some of my friends and I, four by four, to a local logging road. Well, the group got separated and my group took a wrong turn and had to go back. While we were getting turned around, I remember looking out my window and staring straight into red-orange blood eyes. Scrambling backwards in my seat, which I was actually climbing over the top of my husband screaming, oh shit. The worst part was when I opened my eyes that they were still there. I've never been so scared in my life. After that, we started looking for somewhere else to go. This time, we were looking and my husband got hit with depression really hard. And let's just say, I had to save his life. We said screw this after that and got a travel trailer. For years, we would drive past the what we would deem the chicken coop, and because of the condition it got into, I would get chills every single time. As of today, this place has been demolished and the remains burnt. I don't know what was ever in that place, but I hope I never encounter something like that again. And I asked them just because I was curious if the smell that they smelt in their house was sulfur, just because I know a lot of people say that if you smell sulfur in your home, it's usually demonic, but they said that it actually just smelled like a rotten animal, like it smelled like rotting flesh. So that's really scary, and I'm glad you guys are out of there. I'm glad your husband is okay, and that's just absolutely traumatizing, so. I definitely am glad you guys moved and that is scary. Another one from Instagram, they said, okay, so quick backstory. I experienced death at a very young age, only being three. My uncle, who I will call Pete, has passed away in a car accident due to his driving being drunk and on drugs. I remember the day my parents told me we were going to my Nana's because that's who he lived with. They sat me down and told me we were going to see Nana and Pete wasn't going to be there. I had no clue what this meant, so I just smiled and said, okay. When we got there, I wandered upstairs to use the bathroom, which was next to his old room. I remember seeing him on his bed and him smiling at me. I go downstairs and said, I thought you said Uncle Pete wasn't here. My mom and dad were stunned and my Nana was in tears. They then proceeded to explain to me what death was and how it would affect my family. A couple years later, my cousin was born and was an identical twin to my uncle growing up. Even as a toddler, he was a spinning image of him. Now, bear in mind, my uncle had passed long before my cousin was even born, so we had no idea who he was. One night, me and my cousin were staying at Nana's and she came in asking what film we wanted to watch before bed. I said, Dumbo. My cousin then proceeds to say, no, Nana, me and Uncle Pete don't like Dumbo. My Nana's face dropped and she left the room. That same night, I was in bed I now slept in my uncle's old bed because it was more comfortable to me as I grew up and understood he wasn't coming back. I decided to be nosy and went through his drawers and found his old phone. I even powered it on, still with a charge, even after six years. And all of a sudden, the drawer slammed shut as if it was him saying, get out of my stuff. I put the phone back in the drawer and tucked myself into the sheets and went to bed. 3 a.m., the phone rang. It's coming from my drawer. I open it and see my uncle's phone light up. Sam Jones. 
I turned it off and went back to sleep. Then the TV being turned on, not even three minutes after the phone calling. And it was just a screen of the kids TV channel saying we'll be back at eight. The next morning, I went to breakfast and asked my nan who Sam Jones was. Her face drops and she starts to cry again. Later that day, she explained to me that the man who had been driving that car that night that my uncle died was now in prison. I shook it off and told myself I was having a dream that night and never thought about it in depth from that day. One more experience, I'm much older now and understand everything that's happened. One night, I was crying in my room due to the pain I felt of his loss. I'm crying in bed, saying, please come back, please give me a sign that you never left me, please. I then get a feeling to lay down which I had not wanted to do previously. I slowly started to fall asleep and woke up the next morning with the feeling someone had been holding on to me all night and then felt the emptiness of being alone again. Still to this day, I believe he came to me that night and comforted me and sent me to sleep. From here on, these are going to be what my family had experienced. A close friend to my uncle had recently got a new car and while driving, he went into his glove box and found zigzag cigarette papers, which only my uncle used. He was stunned and called my Nana to tell her what he had found. Another time, my Nana had called me panic. She was walking her from the gym and a can of beer had rolled out from the bush and a robin had appeared. The can of beer was in fact the only alcohol my uncle ever drank. And the robin has its own story, which I'll explain now. After my uncle died, we had a bench made in his favorite holiday spot. And every time we left the village, we would sit on the bench to say goodbye until next time. Without fail, every single time that we would go to leave, a robin would appear saying goodbye. This has happened since I was little and it still goes on to this day. Here are some videos, we will get up the robin. And then she sent me a bunch of videos. So I'm gonna play them now and then I'll post them on the screen here. Okay. Oh my goodness. Aww. Beautiful robin. So I just played part of the video and then she posted a photo, so I'll also post here, of the robin. And every single time they go and visit that park bench, that robin appears. So. That's amazing. That is so sweet. That's a really, really cool story that you guys experienced so much stuff. I'm so sorry that your Nana is having such a hard time with this. It's so sad that you kept mentioning that she would break down in tears. That's so sad. But oh my God, that is absolutely crazy. And it's just such a coincidence that the Robin keeps appearing. So obviously it's him. That's crazy. Oh my God. I love that. So that was a really, really cool story. And thank you so much for sharing it with me. And now I'm going to go over to one more story in my Instagram, just because this is another one from a Instagram author that we've actually already read their stories from, but I'm gonna read another experience that they've had. And they said, my experience happened about two months after moving in with my BF, now my fiance. His dad, his stepmom, and grandma, and siblings have left at about 5.30, 6 o'clock, and my boyfriend was really trying to finish his mission on Skyrim. So by the time I decided to take a shower, my BF was busy and no one else was home. Five minutes into the shower, I could hear the door open and the shadow of a man walking slowly towards me which I assumed was my BF, since he liked scaring and pranking me. I rolled my eyes, proceeded to shampoo my hair, and told him, it's no use, babe, I already saw your shadow. I said smiling, but there was no answer. As I rinsed off my hair, I just heard the door close and I shrugged it off. I just assumed he went back to his game. Then, I heard a knock at the bathroom door. Why are you knocking? You know it's open, I said now conditioning my hair. I hear the door once again open and close. By the time I opened my eyes, the shadow was right outside the shower curtain. I was annoyed at this point because all I wanted was a nice relaxing shower. I opened the shower curtain and of course, no one was there. I got out, wrapping myself up with the towel, storming off to our room. I opened the door and I remember shouting at my boyfriend, that's not funny. He looked at me confused. What are you talking about? He said. I looked at him and told him that he was messing with me in the shower and it wasn't funny. Again, he just stared at me. I haven't moved and I can't really afford to stop right now, he said. Safe to say, I waited for him to finish his mission, to finish my shower, and it sure as hell wasn't the last time I had a shower time visitor either. And they haven't given me any more updates, anything, so that was just one of their experiences that they've had in the shower, and that's fucking crazy. And you know what? My brother used to do stuff like that all the time to me when I was a kid. It wasn't like in the shower, because like we're siblings, it's a little bit weird, but he would always try to prank me and jump scare me and jump out at me at places and always try to freak me out. And that was the kind of reaction that I would have too. I'd be like, what the fuck, don't do that. And then he would be like what what are you talking about but she said in her story that her boyfriend has like no poker face so if he was trying to screw with her she would know and he was absolutely clueless so that's absolutely crazy oh my god I fucking hate that <laughs> that is terrifying so I definitely wouldn't like something like repeatedly bothering me in the shower because like that's just weird like no thank you <laughs> So I'm going to read one more story and 
it's actually not so much a story it's just like a list of a bunch of things that um, my friend that I recently just became friends with her she lives in the same city as me and she's a subscriber of mine she just recently told me like what's happening at her work and I'm gonna read it to you guys but we talk a lot so now I have to scroll literally forever because we talked so much, oh my God. <laughs> she says, okay, I'm a reception at a massage parlor and it's haunted, but I've never really had bad vibes. I don't know how that's even possible. Here's her list. I've seen and heard tons of stuff. Figures sitting at the edge of beds, crawling on the ceiling, knocking, felt something touch my back when I was cleaning once. One of the girls was going into the bathroom when she saw another girl standing looking in the mirror. And when she turned around and went back to the staff room, the girl she thought she saw was in the staff room. Once, we heard a huge crash, but couldn't find anything out of place. Figures on security cameras would appear, talking and whispers we could hear, footsteps, and it's just all around fucking crazy. So that's a list of things that happen at her place of work, and that's absolutely terrifying, and I hate that for you. That is so creepy. I would quit. <laughs> then I'm a big chicken, so. These are all the stories that I'm gonna read today. I have a lot more DMs to go through at a later time, but because I had to film so early because I wanted to get filming out of the way to post for you guys, and so that I wasn't like colliding with my roommate coming home. The cars are coming nonstop and honestly, it's like 5.30 so there's nothing I can do and it's really fucking loud. I know you guys say you can't hear it, but it's really annoying me and I just can't film any longer. So this is where I'm gonna end the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed these scary stories. I'll be posting as much as I can in October. I know I didn't post yesterday, but it was Thanksgiving in Canada and honestly, I just needed a day to relax. I'm definitely going to try to post as much as possible in October. So there will be more videos this week to come and if you guys have any scary stories, let's not meet stories or paranormal stories that you guys want to send me, please let me know in the comments down below or message me on Instagram or send me an email at twistedglaminquiries at gmail.com. All of my socials are listed down below so you guys can find them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye!